Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary in Seattle Public Schools. This is a fifth grade reading lesson and in your Making Meaning book we are on Unit 9, Week 3, Lesson 4. This is the final lesson of this week and we are going to continue working on expressing opinions and backing them up with reasons and evidence. The materials you're going to need for this lesson are some sticky notes, and you can just use cut up squares of paper if you don't have sticky notes, a pen or a pencil. You're going to need a book to read for independent daily reading at the end, and you're gonna need a turn and talk partner. Remember your turn and talk partner can be a friend or family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. It can always be someone that you're just calling on your imaginary phone. Also, if you speak a language other than English, you can turn and talk to your partner in any language you feel comfortable in. The topic we've been using this week to express our opinions is year-round schools. Remember, this is the idea that instead of having a long summer break, we would go to school all year round with some two or three week breaks spread out throughout the year. We started out and we read this article called The Pros and Cons of Year-Round Schools. This was a balanced look that told us about both the good things and the bad things about having year-round schools. Then we started reading some opinion pieces like this one, Year-Round School, I'm For It by Chance T from Imperial, Nebraska. He gave all sorts of reasons why he thinks year-round school is good. And we read this one, Year-Round School, I'm Against It, by Anonymous from Temecula, California. And this writer gave us lots of reasons why Year-Round School is a bad thing. All the different readings we did helped us create this chart. We have a list of pros, reasons why Year-Round School is good, like this. There's less summer brain drain and more time to learn. Schools save money. There's more flexibility for families. The first day back is easier. You can take three or four short trips and see more places. After kids in a study tried it for a year, more of them liked it. Learning time in year-round school is the same as a traditional school. And students return to school refreshed and more ready to learn. We also had some cons though. Based on the readings, we said that year-round schools, there are no proven gains in academic achievement. There's no long summer break to relax, be with friends or, and family, or go to a camp. The costs of running year-round schools can be greater. There's basically no more summer camp at all. Kids still use their brains in the summer and it's harder to get summer jobs to save for college. We're gonna have a few discussion questions to start us off today. What's your opinion about year-round schools after everything we've read all week? Explain your thinking to a partner. Now, of course, you could have either opinion. You could say that year-round schools are a good thing, or you could say that you are against year-round schools. Your opinion might sound something like this. In my opinion, I am opposed to year-round schools. The reason I think that is, I think students have a hard time coming back from any break that's longer than even just a few days off. So if students had four two-week breaks throughout the year, all those transition back would make it really hard on students and they would learn a lot less. To add some evidence, 
I've talked to teachers before that worked at year-round schools, and they said it was really difficult to bring a class back from break, and they had to do it four times a year. Here's another question. Did your opinion change throughout the week, and why? Go ahead and turn to your partner again and talk about this question. Well, again, you can have either opinion. Maybe you had an opinion to start the week and it didn't change a single bit, even though we read those articles. But maybe you learned a lot and heard different voices and that really changed what you thought about your own schools. Maybe that article by Chance T, where he said that you really forget a lot during the summer made you think that year-round schools are actually a beneficial thing for student learning. You also could have said that that article with, by the anonymous author made you think that school around year-round schools are terrible, and that's all because summer is really a valuable time, and the author did a good job arguing that summer is a time for camp, for learning, and for older kids to work summer jobs. Since this is our last lesson of the week, and we've been practicing how we express our opinions, there are three lessons I want you to take away about expressing opinions. First, express your opinions truthfully. If you want your opinions to have meaning and you want people to listen to you, it's important that you're being honest about how you feel. Next, express your opinions respectfully. It's important to be humble and remember that other people have different opinions from you. So you should always express your opinions, making sure you respect other people that might not feel the same way. And last, back up your opinions with reasons and evidence. If you want your opinions to be persuasive and if you want to, choose, if you want to use them to change people's minds, you need to make sure you're explaining why you have your opinions. And sometimes you need to provide extra evidence to show that your reasons are true and good ones. It's time for our independent daily reading. Here are the instructions. You're going to pick anything you want to read. And you're going to read for 10 minutes. And you're going to think about the questions about independent reading over here on the right. Use those questions to produce opinions about what you read. Then write your opinions on sticky notes or squares of paper. After 10 minutes, reread and write down evidence to support your opinions. When you're done reading, today we're going to do a journal entry. Here's a little preview of the journal entry, but we're going to get to that later. I'm going to model using this book that I've been reading this week called Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliot. To catch up, what's happened so far is there is a boy named Jackson and his mom has dropped him off at his mysterious grandmother's house. We're going to continue reading here and make sure you think about these questions about independent reading while we read. I shrug off my book bag and set it down by the door. I figure if things don't work out here, I can always run away and hope the Patels will take me in. I am standing in what must be the dining room. There's a short hallway to my right, and I think my grandmother's voice came from that direction. Light spills into the hallway, and a moment later, I hear pots and pans clanging. I figure my grandmother must be getting ready to cook something. So I move over to the kitchen and stand in the doorway. My grandmother is wearing a purple velour house coat 
that clashes with the orange and green wallpaper in the kitchen. The housecoat must be old because the fabric is worn thin at the elbows and around the butt area. I'm guessing my grandmother sits a lot, though I didn't see a television in the room, in the living room. Right now she's standing at the sink, peering into a cupboard that looks pretty empty. You hungry? She asks in a gruff voice. No ma'am, I reply. Boys are always hungry, she mutters before taking a jar of peanut butter off the shelf. I watch as she grabs a knife from the dish rack and a loaf of bread from on top of the fridge. It looks like I'm getting a sandwich whether I want one or not. Her white hair shudders like an angry cloud as she smears peanut butter onto the bread, all the while mumbling to herself. I'm pretty sure she's talking about me, but her voice isn't quite loud enough for me to hear, so I figure she's not actually talking to me. I stare at the worn patch on the back of my grandmother's housecoat and wonder what her face is like. She hasn't looked at me yet, so I guess she's not curious about my face. I wonder if we look alike. Folks always tell me I look just like my mother. We have the same dark eyes, long eyelashes, and curly eyebrows that creep across our faces like twin caterpillars. There's a box on the kitchen table that looks like it just came in the mail. It's about half the size of a shoebox, and lots of colorful stamps around my grandmother's address. But there's no name written on the box, and no return address that I can see. I'm going to write down an opinion here, using my sticky note. And I'm going to say... Hmm. I'm going to answer the third question. How does the story make you feel? And I'm going to say, this story makes me feel curious. Let's keep reading. I go over to the table to get a better look. I slip onto one of the chairs and examine the stamps. Most of them show birds and butterflies, but others have dinosaurs and lemurs on them. Where did this box come from, I ask? My grandmother grunts and says, far, far away. She pauses, glances at me over her shoulder and adds, I have an old friend in Madagascar. You know where that is? I don't look up, but I can feel her eyes on me. Something tells me this is a test. Luckily, I know the answer. It's an island off the coast of Africa, I reply. She puts down the knife and for the first time turns to really look at me. I'm not sure what she sees, but when I look in my grandmother's face, I see an ordinary old woman who doesn't look anything like me or my mother. In fact, her eyes are a murky blue-black color and she doesn't have any eyebrows at all. She squishes her face up and says, boy, what you know about Africa. I wonder what she wants me to say. Geography is one of my specialties. I sift through all the facts in my head and say, Africa's a continent. There are more countries in Africa than there are states in the Union. Madagascar is in southern Africa, off the coast of Mozambique. She folds her arms across her chest and her elbows nearly poke through her velour housecoat. Well, 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 she says in a voice that lets me know she's impressed. I stare at the box so my grandmother won't see that I'm annoyed. People never expect a kid like me to know anything about anything. I'm used to it, but it still bothers me sometimes. My grandmother turns back around and finishes making the sandwich. Your mama teach you about Africa? I shake my head, but then realize my grandmother can't see me. So I say, no ma'am, I taught myself. Then I add, there are lots of rare animal species that live on Madagascar. Ain't that the truth, she replies with a short laugh. For the first time today, I start to relax. Maybe we do have something in common after all. I reach out my hand and turn the box so I can check the stamps on the other side. To my surprise, 
the box jumps. Whoa. I'm going to add another post-it here. And I'm going to say, hmm. I'm going to answer the fourth question. Would you recommend this story to someone else? And I'm going to say, I would definitely. recommend a story to someone else. Remember, when you get to this part and have some opinions down, this is where you go back and find evidence to support these opinions and add it to your sticky notes. All right, let's go back. First, this opinion, the story makes me feel curious. I'm going to say the reason I think that is I don't know where the action is going to come from. For example, if there's going to be a dragon, like in the title, why is the story just about a boy at his grandma's? Okay, let's keep rereading here, and I'm going to see if I can find evidence for my other opinion. say the reason I would recommend it is this it's a mysterious story and I'm gonna add a little more evidence for example a box is sitting on the counter and all of a sudden it jumps For your journal entry today, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take the book you're reading and you're going to write first the title and the author's name. You're going to write what the text is about. You're going to write your opinion of the text based on the part you've read so far. And then you're going to have evidence from the text that supports your opinion. Remember to use proper grammar punctuation and spelling, and to write in complete sentences. Here's what yours would look like if you did dragons in a bag. I'll start by saying the book I'm reading is Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliot. book is about a boy named Jackson that gets left with his mysterious grandma and some magical things begin to happen. Hmm, my opinion. I'll say, in my opinion, the book is interesting and I would recommend it to anyone that likes magical stories. And lastly, I need to make sure I have evidence. The reason I think that is, there are parts of the story that are suspenseful and 
don't know what will happen. I'm going to add a little quote too and say in the text it says the box jumped. And Jackson was looking at the package on his grandma's table. All right, here are those IDR instructions again. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.